a point that is, I think, mostly overlooked is that capitalism and workplace democracy are not mutually exclusive. So if we go back to Adam Smith's theory of capitalism, the whole idea behind it is that you have capitalist entities who have some capital to invest and want to g gain more capital through investments. Now, um, because those capitalist entities want to gain more capital, um, they have to comp compete against each other. No, that's not good. A point that a point that I think is often overlooked is that capitalism and workplace democracy are not mutually exclusive. So if we go back all the way to Adam Smith's original theory, the whole idea behind it is that you have capitalist entities who have capital and want to gain more capital, which is why they have to invest the capital um, in order to multiply it. Uh, the important point is that it doesn't really matter who exactly those or what exactly those capitalist entities are. So it doesn't really matter if you have one a wealthy guy on the top who owns factories and um, has to build more factories to gain more capital or if you have say a worker co-op who decides to build more factories because it also wants to expand and gain more capital. That doesn't really matter and that has actually been understood for a long time now which is why most or a lot of uh, companies and big companies are not owned by individuals but are owned by their shareholders which want to see a return of investment which is which again gives them the impulse to invest capital um, in order to gain more capital capital mm. so in this sense it doesn't actually matter if the companies are owned by shareholders or if they are owned by their workers. The big difference is that the workers actually know something about the companies and have an interest in the long-term uh, health of the company, while shareholders are only interested in short-term profits because they can uh, sell their shares at any point. So it doesn't really matter if the company exists in, let's say, 50 years because in 50 years they themselves uh, have long since sold their shares. What this actually what this actually remedies to a certain extent is the tendency of capitalism to um, to cut the wages of workers because well again if we go back to Adam Smith's original theory the whole idea was that you want to have as much capital to invest as possible which is why it is a bad idea to have high wages because those wages cut into the capital you can use to invest so in this original formulation of the theory uh, it's always the best possible strategy to um, to cut down on wages in order to gain more capital to invest. But what this theory has largely neglected is the fact that if you cut down on wages too much, um, the demand for new products goes down, which leaves open um, which leaves you in a situation where a lot of capital may be invested and a lot of supply is given, but not a lot of demand meet, is given to meet that supply, which is a situation we can, for instance, um, witness in Germany right now, 
where there is a lot more supply for uh, of goods than there is demand for it, which is why Germany has to export all these goods to other European and other nations, which is then decremental to the economic health of those nations themselves. So in this sense, workplace democracy or collectivization of the means of production, um, which are syn synonymous, but which one of them is has much better connotations than the other, which is why I prefer to use it. But in the spirit of honesty, the two things are actually synonymous. Um, this is it. This has actually not much to do with the, the basic idea of capitalism. Those two things aren't um, mutually exclusive. They aren't even very much related. But in a sense, they can even complement each other. And and collectivization of the means of production can, in this sense, actually help against some of the um, ills that unfed. Yeah, unfettered capitalism can bring. In the spirit of openness, I have to say that I have more fundamental, um, more funda I see more fundamental ills with capitalism, but this is at least a bandage we can put over it. And I think it's important to make this point because it is largely ignored in the discourse where there is where an artificial um, an artificial dichotomy dichotomy between um, capitalism and workplace democracy is um, instituted while really the two things are very much or are, can be used to complement each other to a certain extent at least.